All right, today we're going to talk a little bit more about Kirchhoff's laws, and what I really want to do is is talk about how we use these um, to analyze the circuits and, and the things that we might see with them. So to start off with, let's say that we have 10 volt battery pointed this way. It's connected to a 4 ohm resistor, which is connected to another resistor, we'll call it 4 ohms. And over here, it's connected to another battery. And we'll say that this battery has a voltage of 5 volts. Now, basically what we'd want to do for this circuit is determine current through each resistor and the current coming from each battery. So to do that we have a couple of Kirchhoff's rules to look at. Um, the first thing we want to do is determine the current through each element just to decide what it's going to be. Um, I'd say that this battery would push current this way. Um, current would flow this way through this resistor. And current would flow this way through this resistor. <clears throat> and taking a guess, we, we could say one of two things, but we'll go ahead and say that current's going to throw, flow that way through that resistor. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at a loop rule. Loop 1. And we'll put loop 1 in green, I guess. So for loop 1, we're going to start here. We're going to go around. And we're going to go all the way around. So as we go through loop 1, the voltages have to add to 0. I'm going to go the correct way from negative to positive across the battery. That's going to give me 10 volts. Then I'm going with the current across the resistor, which means I'm going to lose energy. So we're going to lose 4 ohms times whatever that current through that first resistor is. And then we're going to go backwards across this battery. So instead of gaining 5 volts, because we went from positive to negative, we're actually going to lose another 5 volts from that battery. Well, now looking at this, I can, I can right away find out what I1 is. Um, and that's not the way we're going to do it. So looking at this right away, I see that um, 0 is equal to 5 volts minus... 4 times I1. So negative 5 volts is equal to 4 times I1. And that current, sorry, positive, is equal to negative 4 times I1. That current comes out to be um, 1.25 amps. And it's positive, which means the direction that we chose beforehand turned out to be correct. Um, the other loop that we could do, and uh, We'll go with this lovely magenta color. Well, there are three possible loops. We'll start off with this one. We'll just say that the current here goes this way. We'll just do this loop right here. For the magenta loop, loop two, again, we start off at zero. We pick up 10 volts as we go across that battery. We're going to lose 4 ohms times again. I1, and it looks like we're going to lose 4 ohms this time times I2. So we have 0 equals 10 volts minus 4 times 1.25 minus 4 times. I2. So we're going to have 0 equals 10 volts minus 5 volts minus 4 I2. And I think we can see where this is going. So negative 5 volts is equal to 4 I2. And I get that I2 is equal to 1.25 amps. Lovely color. That leaves us with a little bit of a question. 
So we're going to look at a node rule. At that node, we have I1 coming in, we have I2 coming out, and then possibly current from here, I3. Looking at our node rule, it tells me that coming through this circuit, okay, I1 is 1.25, I2 is 1.25. If the node rule is true, I1 has got to be equal to I2 plus I3. That's going to tell me that I3 is equal to 0 volts. Now, I buy that. Let's look at what's happening in our circuit. If we go across here, we pick up 10 volts. So at this point in the circuit, I've got 10 volts. As we go across this resistor, we're going to lose 5 volts. That means at this point right here, I've got 5 volts. Well, let's just continue with our, our magenta loop. As I go across this, according to this, I'm going to lose another 5 volts across this resistor. So I end up down here at 0 volts. Which is good, because as we connect back up to this end of the battery, we ought to be at 0 volts. So that makes sense. Now between here and here is just a conductor that gives me still 5 volts here. If I go backwards across this battery, I lose 5 volts and I'm down to 0 volts. That's what we want. Everything fits. Now, what does it mean that we have no current here? To have 5 volts left means we have a push in this direction that's equal to 5 volts. I know push may be a weird way to say it, but that's how we're going to look at electromotive force as a push. From this battery, we also have 5 volts, but it's pushing in the opposite direction. These two pushes cancel each other out. That's why there's no current there. This is going to this is going to become more important as we look at capacitors in these circuits.